Welcome to the lecture on introduction to simulation of manufacturing and material handling systems. So, manufacturing and material handling systems are basically the potential users for this simulation work because uh, many a times the simulation is required to assess because in mostly in these areas you require a large amount of capital investment to start anything any process and without knowing the effect in detail if you start any process then it is likely that the process will not be effective. So, this simulation has been an effective tool in the area of manufacturing as well as in material handling system to first of all predict what will be the outcome of any changes or how the system will behave once any changes are suggested. So, we will discuss what are those aspects, why we study the simulation of manufacturing and material handling system, what is the goal, what are the performance measures which we are interested into in the area of manufacturing and material handling system. So, what we know by simulation that it is normally used to design and optimize the manufacturing systems. So, you know manufacturing system I mean any system where I mean if you take the manufacturing as a whole. So, this simulation is applied to manufacturing system uh, than to any other application area. So, basically all the areas are basically getting benefited by this simulation process. Now, what is the purpose of this simulation? So, simulation is used as an aid in the design of new production facilities. So, wherever you have to make the new production facility, you have to take the help of simulation like you have to make new warehouse, you have to have new store, you have to have suppose new restaurant. So, all these uh, places that will help you in designing. Now, why designing is required? Because we know that because of large sense of competitiveness in the market, whenever you are offering any service or any you have production facility at the production facility also if you have a better design it will lead to better productivity. There will be less congestion, there will be more and more effective utilization of the machines, there will be less bottlenecks. Similarly, you go to warehouse. Now, in the cases of warehouse or suppose you have a network from uh, I mean you have a network of many centers and you have to take the goods from one place to other and then go to other places. Now, where strategically these warehouses should be located? Now, this is basically the simulation helps us in identifying the places where we should have the warehouses because if without the prior knowledge and if you are giving with some of the benefits keeping in mind if you are putting the warehouses maybe in the long run when your requirement changes or your requirement is expected to change looking at the broader perspective in that case you may feel that the decision to put the warehouse at that particular place was not good enough. So, in that case what we do is we first of all simulate that if we put these warehouses at this place from here the cost of transportation overall will be minimum or the ease by which you can get it or, or the customer satisfaction which we get that whatever be the parameter uh, based on that it will help you to think about it. Because in most of the cases when you have a new production facility, once the facility is created you cannot change it. it I mean changing that facility takes a large amount of resources and time. So, uh, this simulation is used as an aid in the design of new production facilities 
warehouses, work centers, all that to evaluate suggested improvements to existing systems. Now, there is suppose some system and you are facing certain problems in that system, you want to evaluate it. Suppose you have are having a restaurant and you feel that uh, the restaurant is uh, not able to cope the demand of the customer. There is large amount of customer who are in the queue and ultimately they are going to different you know restaurants or so. So, in that case what are the suggested improvements like what should be the number of tables and chairs so that the waiting time is reduced, what will be basically the investment required for that. So, without doing that if you take more and more number of tables and chairs, if you put more and more counters and if they are not utilized properly then the return on the investment will not be proper. So, it will tell you that if you try to improve any existing system, how to evaluate it, whether any change is you know suggested, whether it will lead to the improvement or it is not desired. For evaluating the impact of capital investment, so whatever capital investment we are making, how it is going to be utilized, how it is going to be worth of worth. So, in the area of investment also this is used. In having a test drive before making capital investments, now many a times without going into the particular practical changes, you can have a test drive. So, without doing anything, without uh, physically changing the parameters, you can have a test drive and you can assess the effect on this uh, system performance measures. Now, manufacturing and material handling simulation, I mean they need to address certain you know issues, certain uh, details. So, first of all the thing is that you should discuss the issues of scope and level of detail. So, issues of the scope, so means you must know in what is the breadth of the what is in what breadth you can go, how much you can uh, expand the study. So, that will tell you that yes you can go to that these and these parameters or so, what, what uh, are the parameters which you can find out of it and then the level of detail means you can go to the depth, what are the level of details. So, one tells about the breadth and one tells about the depth. So, what should be uh, the encompassing area where you can work and you can get the work done and then what should be the level of details, what are the parameters, up to what value you can get, all these things I mean you should know that what you want to achieve. It describes, so scope is describing the boundaries of the project it tells you that these are the issues, these are the uh, you know points up to which you have to keep your domain. And then once you have done that, then you go for the level of details, what are the parameters you want, what level of details you need to, up to what depth you want to get the results. Because if you go for a very large system, if your domain is very large, if you keep the scope very very large, certainly it requires more and more infrastructural support, you need to give more investment and that is basically justifiable when accordingly you have set what level of details you want. If the level of details are very minute, if they are quite you know considerable, then you can go for it because ultimately you have to justify the investment which you are making. You, if you go to very complex system, very large scope, very minute level of details you have to have, in that case you have to spend good amount of resources and then accordingly it should be justified. Proper scope and level of detail 
should be determined by the objectives. So, that is what we discussed that we must have the objectives in mind. We have to ask the questions ourselves that what we want, what are the performance measures, up to what detail we require the knowledge. So, level of detail could be constrained by the availability of input data and knowledge of how system components work. Now, the thing is that once you have the scope, once you have set that domain, now you want to have the level of detail, but then that may be constrained by the input data, how much data you have. You need this data, you need certain particular data, but for that the input which is required you have not. So, that may be one of the constraint. Also many a times uh, when we keep simulation in mind, we feel that we can get anything, but the thing is that for getting anything you wish, you must know how to get it, how your system will work, how that simulation will work and how will you model so that whatever you want to achieve, you can get it. So, the proper objective should be clear you must know the constraints, the constraints may be the available of input parameters, available of resources as input, all these things are constraints and we will have to work within that constraint. If we do not work within the constraints, we will not get what we get and even if we try to get somehow, those results cannot be said to be a credible results, we cannot say that these are the results which are trustworthy, which are credible. So, that is to be kept in mind whenever we have simulation results. Now, you have the different models of manufacturing system which has been taken into consideration. So, you have to uh, see that the different characteristics are there, different types of systems are there which have different characteristics and this uh, you know these uh, methods are there are many kinds of such models which will uh, which are like this like physical layout then labor equipment. So, we have the different uh, you know models of the manufacturing system like if you go to this physical layout we are interested more to know about you know what should be the proper layout how should the machine be placed, what should be the placement of different you know units, so that it will give you more and more productivity. So, that can be you know uh, modeled through simulation. Similarly, you have the labor. So, if you take the labor into account, you have to deal with the labor in most of the manufacturing sectors. Now, in that case what happens? that you have to schedule the shift, you have to assign the job duties. So, all these things require uh, this simulation help because that will tell you that how to have the shift when somebody should come and somebody should do depending upon the nature of job, you can have the simulation and get this job done. Then comes the equipment. Now, for the equipments you have many things which are taken into account like you have the equipment rates and capacities, then the main thing comes in the case of equipment is breakdown. So, you need to have many a times you need to have the uh, maintenance of the breakdown. So, you may have preventive maintenance and, and so, you may have to see the times when the it fails. So, that can be you know uh, you can guess, you can simulate and tell that this is the time when it is likely to uh, have the failure. So, that from simulation you can benefit and you can predict and you can go for preventive maintenance or so. Similarly, how much time it will take to repair? So, this is uh, one of the aspect which is required in case of equipments. 
So, the time to repair can be modeled using simulation as we have understood that many a times this time to repair are following certain typical distribution curves. So, based on that we can simulate and based on that we can have the persons in the shop floor on the shop floor who can be ready for the repair of the machines. Then uh, if the time of repair is known, if the time of failure is known then in that case what are the resources required that can also be you know one of the prime objective. So, this model of uh, equipment will talk about all that that what is the resource requirement for these repairs to take place. Then comes the maintenance. So, you have in the maintenance again you have the preventive maintenance schedule is there resources requirement is there. So, these are the basically uh, simulation I mean uh, used in these areas like in preventive maintenance or in the case of you know time and resource requirement and further what is the uh, time to repair, what is the tools and fixtures required all this is uh, can be aided by the simulation. Uh, further you have work and center and here you have basically processing is there, assembly is there. So, these are the elements in the work center. Uh, you have the product. So, this product is basically you have product flow or routing, what kind of routing will it will be uh, going through, what are the resources required. So, that is needed in the case of product model. You go to production in that you have to see that how much you require to produce, when to order, what should be the inventory level, what should be the you know uh, items and quantities which you must have in your stock, so that there is no shortage. So, this comes under that production schedules. Then, uh, so this is the production schedule basically. Uh, then you have the production control and uh, in that production control we basically do the assignment of job to the workers. Uh, like uh, we are also doing the task selection to the work centers. So, this is coming under the production control. Uh, further, we have the supplies then storage in the supplies we talk about ordering receipt and then we have the storage we have the storage for many things like supplies spare parts. So, how to have the storage mechanism how to locate in a proper way these are the aspects which we discuss. Then we have packing and shipping uh, for that we have the order consoli consolidation then you have many a times you have loading unloading. So, how the loading and unloading can be added by this simulation work. So, these are the different kinds of models where the manufacturing uh, in the manufacturing system uh, where the simulation is very much advantageous. Now, what we see that this, 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 this were the models of manufacturing system, then we have uh, at the same time we have the uh, material handling system. So, material handling system basically it has been seen that in the manufacturing system about 80 to 85 percent of total time is going in the area of materials handling, because most of the time you have to take the material from one place to other. And then in that case you have to see that how effectively you do the handling process. So, if we are optimizing in that aspect it is going to give the you know benefit in terms of good productivity, good profit or so. So, the you know material handling or waiting for the materials handling to occur. So, you have many work in process inventories are there and they are vast investment and if you reduce them it is going to have a great benefit great cost saving. So, it is very important 
that you mo should have a good material handling simulation. Now, the you know we have models of material handling system which contain uh, different types of subsystems. So, uh, what are the different subsystems? So, different subsystems like you have different kinds of material handling systems like we may have conveyors. Now, in the conveyors we have different kinds of conveyors accumulating and non accumulating like many a times we need the system where the item which is coming from the behind and if it comes. So, if one stops another come and get piles over that and there is no harm in that then that case this is the accumulating type of <coughs> conveyor. And in the non accumulating we take care that they are not at all coming and closing together because in that way there may be damage to the parts which are basically coming from the back and they are getting collided with the you know part which is ahead. So, similarly you have indexing like you are having the fixing of uh, the places this way you have indexing type of conveyors, you have fixed window or random spacing means in some cases you have the fixed spacing between the two items which are above and I mean at the ahead and which is at the back and then sometimes you have the random spacing. You have power type of conveyor, you have free type of conveyor. So, you have this type of system uh, conveyors and they can be studied by this simulation process. Similarly, you also use many kinds of transporters in uh, material handling. Now, transporters means you have unconstrained vehicles as well as guided vehicles. Many a times many of the transporters do not require any specific you know route to go like you have trucks which are coming which are taking the item from one place and giving to other place movement of the rickshaws or trolleys or so. So, these are the unconstrained vehicles trucks moving from one place to other. So, all these or labors moving from one place to other with certain things these are the unconstrained vehicles where you do not have any constraint on that you know uh, entity which is moving. Whereas, many a times you have uh, some very very constrained path a guided path and on that the vehicles which move they are known as uh, guided vehicles. So, you have automated guided vehicles AGVs. So, similarly you have bridge cranes other overhead lifts. So, these are the different kinds of transporters which are used. Then you have storage system in the storage system we have again small part storage oversize items are there automated storage and retrieval system is there. So, these are the different subsystems in material handling system. Now, what are the objectives and performance measures of this simulation. So, the purpose of simulation software is to gain insight and understanding into how that new modified system has to work. So, whenever we have a simulation we have we talk about simulation means normally we use the computers we use standard softwares to know about the process and then once we know that then we can see that how can we modify that particular system. So, there are many questions which arise that whatever we are doing whether they are going to meet our expectation whatever we want to achieve whether that is going to benefit us. So, this is coming to us and that is what I mean should be answered whenever we talk about the simulation. We are also worried that what will be the response I mean at peak periods. So, how it will behave uh, when you have the peak periods. Then there are many instances when you have the you know short term surges and congestion. So, suppose in Q you are going you will see that all on a sudden the Q length has become quite high and there has been chaos. So, how, what should be the recovery time? So, that so at that time uh, the organization may think of having some extra 
servers. So in that case they can think that okay if even if that uh, stage comes maybe that we if we allow for 10 minutes and if we put 3 more servers in 10 minutes it will again come to normal. So that can be studied by simulation. So before doing that you can have the simulation and then if you come to this conclusion that yes it is going to be benefited then you can go for that particular step. Staffing requirements, how many staffs you want to have, what is the number of staff you should keep so that your purpose is solved, the staff is utilized, his utilization is maximum as well as he is not overstressed. Then many a times you know a large number of problems, so you should know that what is the cause of this problem. So, it will tell you if you do the simulation then it will tell you that this is the cause of this problem since there was a lack in this communication. So, this problem arose. Then system capacity, what is the condition which is ca causing the system to reach its capacity, what are the parameters, how much it should be varied so that whatever is the system's capacity it is completely utilized or it is completely you know coming at that stage. So, these are the objectives normally of a system. So, further so objectives come like you have they provide you the numeric measures of performance give insight and understanding about the system operation. Uh, then the visualization through animation is a great tool once you see any process happening and you visualize through animation it gives a large amount of insight and feeling about the kind of problems, the operations, what are the assumptions you have assumed, what are how the operation goes on and finally the results. So that gives you a large benefit when you see the visualization through animation. So simulation basically whenever we talk about simulation computer simulation and today's uh, since we have very upgraded softwares and so. So, if you do the simulation you can see good amount of visualization, you can see that how in queuing some person is coming and he is going, how queue is getting piled up or how in the manufacturing system how machines are getting used to it once per machine from where it gets free another work comes to it. So, like that, so that gives a large amount of you know insight about the process and it will help you in identifying the problem areas and then it will also help you in uh, optimizing its performance to quantify the system performance and optimize it. So, this is the objective. Uh, what are the performance measures? So, the performance measures will be something like you have throughput under average and peak loads, then you have cycle time that when what should be the cycle time every time what is how the resource is to be utilized, what are the bottlenecks and choke points which are there, then what will be the queue developed, how it is to analyze, analyze them, then it is uh, performance measures, then queuing and delays in material handling devices, you have working progress, storage needs, staffing requirements that we have already discussed. So, we are seeing that we have these are the normal performance measures in the material handling or manufacturing and even non manufacturing system you have non manufacturing system means you have many places where the material handling takes place there is no manufacturing but there is again the material handling takes place warehouses or docks or so. So, these are the non manufacturing systems. So, there also you get uh, I mean to know large amount of performance measures like queues or delays or so. So, this way these are the difficult performance measures, thank you very much.